So you're looking to get into Star Wars Legion, but you're unsure what army is right for you. In this video, we're gonna break down all of the armies, how they play, which characters you can use. There are some that are usable through a few different factions. So if you're looking for something with uh, a few options, like there's a lot of crossover between Rebels and Republic, we will go through that as well. All the information you need to make a decision. So I'm gonna start with the army I started with, which was Rebels. It's got some of my favorite characters in growing up as a big Luke fan, still am. I love some of his parts, even in the uh, latest trilogy, which I know a lot of people dislike. It had some cool moments for me. I don't necessarily love the movies, but there was a lot of very cool stuff. And like Luke facing down the at, -AT was some of my favorite moments. So yeah, it's a character I've always loved. They've got a lot of units I love. So they've got obviously Tontons, they've got ATRTs, they've got Wookiees. So there's a lot to love about them for me. But this does work in the Rebels' favour. I would say they are the most decked out of the factions. So they've got a ton of options. They've got something like eight, nine options for a commander. They've got a ton for operative, probably the most again, a ton of core units. The special forces have got Mandalorians. They've got sniper units. They've got Wookiees. They've just got a plethora of options. So if you're looking for stuff where you can play a lot of games that play very, very different lists. I would say Rebels is the one to go for. Like I've already mentioned, you can get the ATRT, you can get the Tontons, the Swoop Bike Riders. There's even speeder trucks and air speeders, land speeders. So there are a ton of different options. I will say though, if you're into, you want like a massive tank or you want some really massive, impressive stuff on your side, Rebels don't really have that. You're going to have to look at something like Empire with the ATST or. The droids have a massive tank. There's a saber tank for the Republic. So there are a ton of options outside of this bit. If you're looking for uniqueness and a wide variety, then Rebels is probably the one to go for. I would also say if you're a fan of the movies and you prefer the good side, it's hard to look past Rebels. They've got Han, they've got Luke, they've got Chewie, Lando. All of those characters you saw in the movie are on the side of Rebels. There's Leia. More recently, we got Mando and Boba Fett, Ahsoka, K2SO and Cassian, Sabine Wren, R2-D2, IG-11. There are so many characters. If you're fans of just Star Wars in general, if you prefer the good side, this is most likely going to have your favorite characters in. Now, for me, it actually doesn't. My favorite character is Anakin Skywalker, not Vader, I think. I prefer the gray Anakin where he's sort of pulled both ways. Vader is just sort of all one way and then the other. So I, Anakin is my favorite character from Star Wars. However, I would say my next like four or five favorite characters are probably in Rebels. Maybe the odd one. I do love Palpatine in Empire and other stuff. But a lot of the big hitters, a lot of those names you know from the shows and movies are going to be in Rebels. So that is another plus for them. But it's all well talking about being a fan of it. What about if you're trying to play? What about if you want to get these onto a battlefield? How do the Rebels play? Well, we have actually already touched on it. So they've got a ton of options. So you could run them as a gun line. So just long range things with snipers, picking off shots. You could go, I would say it's one of the few lists that can go heavy on heroes. So normally you'd expect one, at most two heroes. I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the best Rebel lists run three heroes because they've got the options, because they've got so many variations and different ways to play them. So again, the variation and the heavy amount of heroes they have plays into their play style and it's something you can build around. So if you're looking to build like small lists where you've got fewer activations, but you've got massive characters, big bulky characters with lots of health and lots of damage, then this might be the one for you. In general, the Rebels are very good at shooting. They've got black dice, which is in the middle. So there's white, which like stormtroopers and stuff have. There's black, which is in the middle, which is a regular core unit. And then you've got red, which is more for like the lightsaber users and force users and stuff like that. You may, maybe we'll see it on things like more experienced shooters like Cassian or Din. The Rebel Troopers do also have Nimble, which means they can reuse dodge tokens. They've got they've got Fleet Troopers, which have shorter range, but they do shoot more dice. They're weaker dice, but they can also stand by and gain aim. They've got Rebel Veterans, where you can include emplacement units like uh, mortars. And although their defense dice are bad with white dice, they do have stuff like we mentioned Nimble and Defend and other things to sort of counterbalance that. So I do think I do think you get the best of both worlds with the Rebels. Like I did mention though, they don't have like, you can't just slam a massive tank on the board. You can't hide behind it. You can't 
in the bigger games use these bigger things i would say the biggest thing they have is probably the air speeder or speeder truck so if that's what you're looking for you're not really going to get it in this i can't even think what they would ever add for rebels obviously with mandalorian around we could see stuff added but yeah it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one i don't think we're going to see a lot of stuff also i would say we've seen a lot release for rebels although like i said mandalorian is a current show so we could see more release for them in the future like we had Swoop Bikes, we had Mando himself, we've got Grogu. So I would say longevity wise, if you're looking into Rebels, you are going to have that with shows like Mando as they are in a period where Rebels are around. That also goes for the same for Empire, which we'll move on to now. So everything I've just said for Rebels applies to Empire in terms of diversity of army. So the Empire appears entirely through uh, everything we see in the movies and games and the so many different versions of tv shows and other things which is the counterpoint to the rebels so there's just as much empire stuff they've got a ton of heroes a ton of uh operatives we've got a ton of special forces they have got some big stuff with a combat tank they've got the lat there's an atsd so there is a lot more big stuff if you want big stuff on the table you want impressive stuff you want to uh, spend a day building and painting something empire is definitely the one for you but it also still gives you that diversity with all the different, uh, like we just mentioned, special forces, core units, all of the heroes and all of that good stuff. I could see Empire running a two list. Normally they've run as like a gun line and the most importantly recently a Blizzard Force was released, which is a not only a great way to get into the game, but it is very, very competitive. So I would say it's probably one of the best lists currently. So if you're looking to get into it, you want a powerful army. Empire is definitely that. If you ignore the Stormtroopers, which shoot with white dice, they do have red saves, which is very good. It means they're very durable. Um, they've got precise, so they can spend a name token to roll additional dice. So there is, like with the nimble and the defense on the uh, Rebels, you've got similar with the Stormtroopers. But being, being tanky units, I don't think is bad. So this sort of goes across all of them. You've also got the Shore Troopers which have the black shooting dice as the rebels do, but they've got a red defense dice, which is better. They've got emplacement trooper and target. So they do have more elite units than most armies. They've got a ton of special forces. Uh, the Royal Guards are incredible with Palpatine. You've got the recent death troopers, which are absolute monsters. You've got special forces, which work with Iden Versio and stuff like that. There's a lot, there's a lot of synergy in Empire. You've also got a ton of other options with speeder bikes and dobacks and ATSTs. Again, very similar to Rebels, a lot to do, a lot to choose from, and plenty of variation. We have already spoke on how they play. It's more of a gun line. It's more of the stuff you see in the Blizzard Force box. There are obviously other ways to play it, and things like Palpatine is very powerful. He's able to sort of pull strings behind the scenes. Also, if he gets over to you, he has some really nasty command cards. I would say Empire in general have some of the best ones. Vader himself can spread a ton of fear. There's one that adds three suppression to stuff near him and then he can give out suppression with fear. And then his attacks, he just, he is an absolute nightmare to deal with. He is very slow, as are a lot of stuff in Empire. There's the Dubaks, there's uh, the Snowtroopers, there's Vader himself, Palpatine. There's a ton of, there's a ton of one pip stuff where it just moves one, which isn't great but they have ways to counter it so you've got burst of speed for vader and palpatine the do back can i think it takes suppression to up its speed so there are ways around it it's just just as a base they are quite slow but they've got a ton of stuff to counter that so it's nothing to worry about rebels and empire were released together so they are sort of counter to each other but let's move into republic probably my second favorite army mainly because of uh anakin but um They've obviously got Yoda, they've got Chewie, they've got Obi-Wan. So if you're a fan of the Clone Wars, maybe the TV show, or you enjoyed the movies, which I did. I know a lot of people hate Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. I think Revenge of the Sith is one of the best movies. I think it's one of the... It's probably my top three or top four, honestly. I Like I said, Anakin's one of my favorite characters. And uh, yeah, it's just such a good movie. Really good fight scenes. And in general, yeah, just one of my favorite Star Wars movies. There is a ton of clone stuff, as you would expect. You've got Cody, you've got Rex, you've got, you can get Fives. 
Echo. I'm sure at some point we'll see the Bad Batch, hopefully, which would be kind of cool. I, we haven't yet got Mace Windu. We haven't yet got Qui-Gon Jinn. I don't know if we will get him because this is a little later on. I would love to see them, though, because they're massive characters and characters that deserve to be represented in this game. I think Mace Windu is a fan favorite, as is Qui-Gon. I'd love to see more of Liam Neeson. If we are going to see those characters, that does mean this army has got a lot going for it going forward. It's very akin to Rebels, so when we see stuff, we might find out about characters in TV shows for this. So we could see a lot of other characters yet to come. Obviously, there's a ton from Clone Wars and stuff we could still see. So I'd say the longevity for this one is another good one. There's going to be a ton of stuff coming for it. And in general, we've seen a good release schedule so far for Star Wars Legion. So if you're looking for a game that has that longevity, this is definitely one. In terms of how the army plays, I would say this is one of the more elite where the... Even the core units are absolutely incredible. They've got fire support. They've got red defense dice with black attack dice. They are more expensive than the regular ones, but these are just such powerful units. At the moment, you normally see people just run a ton of these and then a couple of heroes. So it could be like Anakin and whoever really, Yoda. It could be Obi-Wan. There's a few different ways. Normally, it's just Anakin and then like a commander. So you can get sort of general commanders with no name. And then just... Tons of clone troopers, clone trooper one, clone trooper two, arc troopers. And that's how you can tell this faction has the probably most elite. They are the most expensive, but it's just, you probably just want to run a ton of these guys. So if you're looking for an army where you're just running a lot of the troops, so you've got like a massive army. I wouldn't say it's the biggest army because we'll get onto separatists shortly and they can just absolutely spam the field. But this is a big army of lots of troops. You can also use the tanks. There is obviously the Sabre class uh, fighter tank, which had its day. It was more used to sort of block stuff and it is very powerful. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it was just there to do that, but that was a massive part of it. Obviously sharing tokens around it, which has changed slightly. So it is seeing less and less play, but it's a powerful, it's a powerful unit. It's one you can definitely use. It's one I don't have yet, but I do plan to grab. And the minute I've just got, like I said, a few of the heroes you've got. The big ones are like Anakin, Yoda, Chewie, because uh, Yoda and Chewie have some combinations. Anakin is just very unique to use, which I love. They really play on his gray side in this. So if you're an Anakin fan, Republic is definitely one for you. Like I mentioned before, they do share Wookiees with Rebels. They also share the ATRTs. So there is a lot of shared stuff between these. So I currently play both of these armies for that very reason. It means I can share a lot of my units between them. Obviously, paint jobs and how, just paint them more generic and you can use them. I, I wouldn't say like paint them in certain colors for certain armies, because then you're going to need more than more than one. I've got a few Wookiee units. I've got a few ATRTs, so very easy to change between armies as you see fit, which is always good. So if you're looking to collect a couple of armies, I'd say Rebel and Republic are your best options. It does also mean if you're just trying to collect with a friend, you could buy an army each and share a lot of those pieces. So you don't have to spend as much if you're just looking to get into it fairly cheap. But I do think that is worth mentioning because games like this can be expensive. Obviously, they build up. Obviously, you want more and more models. So reducing those costs with armies that share models is always good. Now, as we mentioned there, we've got Separatists. Now, these things absolutely spam B1 uh, battle droids. You can see a ton of these on the battlefield. The thing is... A core unit starts with four, battle droids start with six, so they can potentially get up to eight characters in a unit. You run like five of those and that's 40 odd things. These tiny little battle droids running around the battlefield. When you're playing stuff like objectives and you need a lot of characters around it to hold them, battle droids are superior, so they are easier to take out. They don't shoot as well. They shoot as bad as stormtroopers and defend as bad as rebels. But with the amount of characters in them, there's just a lot to like about these. It depends how you want to play. If you want to play Swarm, this is definitely the army for you. You can have a ton of units. You can afford to make mistakes with so many units. Where something like Re Republic might struggle because they are more elite. So once you lose them, they feel a little more a little more painful than losing like a battle droid, for example. Because there are like double the amount of battle droids or at least a few more depending on how you play them. Because they are AI, there is also stuff where they coordinate with each other. So if one gets a order issued to them, then you can pass it on to the next. 
There's AI where you can, well, you have to do certain things. So you have to attack, for example, if able, which can dictate your play. You do need to play into that. You need to know positions. So if you don't want to attack and you wanted to do something else like claim an objective, for example, you don't want to move in range where you can then attack because your AI means you will have to do that. Normally in these armies, you used to like the tactical droids. You do see Dooku, you do see Maul now and again. Don't normally see Grievous. You don't normally see some of the other characters. Asajj Ventress has just come out or recently came out, I should say. I've not yet seen her in play. Very excited to see her on the table. She looks super good, very cheap for a force user. They do get access to Bosk and Cad Bane via the mercenaries. They don't have a ton of units outside that. I mean, if they didn't have those, which only recently came in, they would have Maul as their operative. They've recently had a few more, but there is not a ton of options in Separatist. Where you've got over a handful of stuff in the Special Forces for Empire and Rebel, you just get the three in Separatist. So there's not a ton of choices, but you get a ton of models on the field. The Commandos are cool. You've got the Magna Guards, which are ma I'm a massive fan of. You do get a ton of big stuff. You get the Dwarf Spider Droids. You get the Droidicas. You get the Tanks. So if you're just trying to throw a ton of stuff on the battlefield and you want it to look cool, you want swarms of stuff whilst having these massive tanks, you're looking to have a more consistent army. Obviously, with the Coordinate, you can sort of set up where you want to go and what you want to do a little easier. There's a lot of stuff to love about the Separatists. They are by far, they have the most dispensable units, but that's not always a bad thing when you're trying to hold objectives. Star Wars Legion is at the end of the day, an objective game. It's very, very rare. It's just an all out war. So having the numbers can be a massive advantage. Now I do want to touch on the Shadow Collective very briefly because I've not had a chance to play them. So I don't, I don't think I can give the best opinion on these. They are fairly new out. They've been out a little while now, but if anyone in the comments has played them, please drop in the comments. Let people know coming onto this video what to expect. They don't have a ton of options. Like I say, they've not long been out. They've got three commanders. They've got a couple of core units, and then they've got like one of each for the heavy units and the special forces. So there's not a ton to choose from. They do share stuff. So they share the speeder truck with rebels. Also the swoop bike riders and in general, their stuff is open up to everyone. So the Sun Enforcers, the Pike Syndicate. So these can be used in different armies. So you could potentially collect this army and collect any other army, which is very tempting because the units in this are very powerful. The Pike Syndicates in general have some really cool long range options. So you can slide them into stuff like Rebels. You can put them in Empire. I think they can go in pretty much any army. The Black Sun Enforcers are slightly more restricted. But like I say, any units in this are usable in most things. So if you're looking for versatile things, things where you can buy them and use them in different armies, this is another great choice. You do also get a variant on Maul in this. In general, I think they've just got powerful units, which really help other armies. I think we'll need to see a lot more in Shadow Collective before it sort of takes over the game. But it's got some very powerful options and... I can't wait to actually play against it. The problem is I play in quite a small group at the moment, so it's hard to, outside of the armies we've got, we've got all but this. So it's, uh, yeah, it's one that I do need to maybe hunt down so just so we can play against it. Maybe need to get out to some more tournaments and see a bit more of the competitive game. But that is my recap, my rundown, my wrap up of all of the factions in Star Wars Legion. Hopefully this video has been some help. If it has, drop in the comments below. If you need any advice or assistance in the comments, more than happy to help. Hopefully some people can help with the Shadow Collective or any comments. Maybe you think this was missed or maybe this should have been said instead. Let me know. That's all I've got for this episode though. So if you want to see any more tabletop stuff, miniatures, card games, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>